Battlefield 2042 had one of the most disastrous launches of almost any video game in history, and there's been some bad ones. Halo the Master Chief Collection, Cyberpunk 2077, the list goes on. But Battlefield 2042 became synonymous with games being released unfinished, unpolished, and just downright broken. It was practically the poster child for AAA titles being somehow less functional than my grandma's 1998 Honda Accord. Battlefield 2042, however, in some sense did have the weight of the world on its shoulders before its release. Before the disaster on launch, the anticipation and hype for a distant future slash modern day Battlefield game was unprecedented. Personally, I was really ready to get thoroughly invested as a returning Battlefield fan. Games like Bad Company 2 and Battlefield 3 were where I personally fell in love with the series, and after taking a break from titles like Battlefield 5 and 1, I was ready to fall in love with the series that I had come to appreciate for so many reasons. However, Battlefield fans new and old would be virtually universally let down and disappointed. 2042's nightmare launch took the wind out of the sails of nearly the entire community, but what went so wrong and why? And also, more importantly, how has 2042 managed to make a comeback so insane that its player count currently eclipses its peak even at the height of its launch? The story of Battlefield 2042 is a fascinating one. This is a story of big ideas, lies, developers exiting a project, bad decisions leading to a worst case scenario launch, and also a change in direction and course correction leading to what some consider a redemption arc. But before we can get to where we are today, or even the launch, we need to go back just a bit further. We need to go before the launch of Battlefield 2042. Hey folks, I'm Freeman, Battlefield's community manager. I'm joined by senior producer Ryan MacArthur and creative director Lars Gustafsson. 2021 was a really rough year for the FPS genre. Call of Duty Vanguard and Halo Infinite flopping respectively, 2042 was in the best position to steamroll its competition, and the bar was not set incredibly high for that year. And so after Battlefield 5, DICE began to make plans for their next game. Initially, this was called Battlefield 6, in interviews and internally. This began to drum up hype and interest and speculation about what direction they were going to take this year's Battlefield title. The problem was, DICE themselves didn't even really know where they wanted to take it. The report suggesting that Battlefield 6 was going to be a Battle Royale game initially turned out to mostly be true. Keep in mind, this was still when BR games were red hot on the market, and Battlefield's last attempt at one of those, Firestorm, didn't really end up panning out how they hoped. It seems like internally DICE and Battlefield's lead developers had conflicting visions of what the next game needed to do. It appeared to be the case that some of them were all in on the BR idea and others completely rejecting it, and as a result, one of the first signs that something was wrong was a mass exodus of flagship developers that worked on games such as Bad Company 2, Battlefield 3, and 4. While some turnover of employees and even leads on a project is totally normal and expected, this sudden outflow of these highly experienced and respected developers of these classic games were not going to be present for the production and maintenance of Battlefield 2020. 42. This went fairly unnoticed at the time, but should have been the first real signal that something was wrong. For some reason, DICE and EA thought that it would be fit to tell the community that development was going smoothly and that the project was even ahead of schedule, which turned out realistically to be a complete and utter lie. It seems like this was only said in order to maintain people's faith and confidence in the game, because real hype was building around the release of 2042. I mean, I'm sure you all remember the trailer that came out and how this completely broke the internet when it released. I mean, and in my opinion, it's still a top 10 video game trailer of all time, so credit where it's due. But of course, this would set a certain expectation about what we were going to be playing once it finally hits the shelves. But while EA and DICE on the surface appeared to be showing nothing but content confidence in the game and what was going on behind the scenes. From our perspective at least, everything appeared to be on track, but the reality behind the curtain was something much darker. Before we go any further, just want to remind you to subscribe if you haven't already. It's a totally free way to help out the channel and it only takes a second of your time. Thank you so much. There were a few key things taking place behind the curtains that had a large impact on the game. Firstly, COVID had such a large effect on the normal rhythm of the development cycle. This was the transition where people had to temporarily work from home. It wasn't that they were already set up to do so, it was them leaving the studio and then trying to figure out how to work remotely, which that transitional period, according to DICE, was one of the biggest reasons bugs did not get squashed before the game came out. 
the process of trying new builds was just too slow and this is probably true because i ended up playing a technical preview of the game months before its actual release and the build that i played ended up being like four months old already so it wasn't looking too hot for them already now i understand a lot of people don't see covid as a valid excuse to release a bad video game and as i always say Yes, I agree, it shouldn't be an excuse, however, it is an explanation for why certain things happen, though. I do think the vast majority of the admittedly hilarious and terrible game-breaking bugs and the non-performance was due to the challenges COVID threw at the development. There just wasn't able to have that time for it to be polished and presentable on launch. Secondly, DICE had to use this title to transition over to the newest Frostbite engine, as they're always just a bit behind. Every single Battlefield title, by the time it's conceived and work starts to be done on it, it eventually falls behind on the engine that they're using and a new innovative version of it comes out so you know they start working on a project a couple months later there's a new or better frostbite engine and they were pretty behind for a couple of years and they decided to use battlefield 2042 to be the transition game to the newest frostbite engine so they dumped a lot of time on just simply getting everything to work on the new tech to put it in other words imagine you have to build a car but the parts that you're using to build your car at your shop are always three years outdated at some point you're probably gonna be like okay you know production's gonna have to pause for a second but after some time we're going to be using the newest parts and then we can get started again but that downtime is very real so you have you know a tech and logistical nightmare with frostbite and covid and you have very tight deadlines and high ambitions and i'm not giving ea an out here but i think most reasonable people can acknowledge that there was a bunch of challenging external factors weighing heavily on this game so you kind of have this deadly perfect storm where it's not only a project that isn't really working creatively but also the logistics behind it and just trying to make the game are also a disaster but trust me it gets much worse still at some point during 2042's creation, the idea to make it a battle royale game was largely scrapped. This title underwent more core idea changes than any other Battlefield game on record today. For a while, it's a traditional Battlefield game, and then all of a sudden it's not, and then it's a battle royale, and then it's kinda not, and then it's a specialist tack shooter, and then it's kinda not. Basically, 2042 couldn't come together as a singular vision at all until even after its release. Matter of fact, it wouldn't even feature a single player campaign like battlefields have pretty much always done in the past they told the community that there would be narrative elements within the multiplayer and much of the story and lore can be derived from that but this did little to quell the outcries from the fan base why wouldn't this game have a campaign well, mostly because that requires a strong singular vision and some real consistent leadership to commit to a large single player portion of their offering, which unfortunately DICE and 2042 just did not have. So some skepticism on the part of the community was beginning to grow. A Battlefield game with no campaign and apparently not a battle royale anymore? What was going on? At this point, it should have been more clear to us that DICE was attempting to chase current trends rather than executing on a unique and ambitious vision, which is possibly why many of these former classic Battlefield DICE devs stepped down as a result of what I mentioned prior. While that is admittedly speculative, I wouldn't be surprised at all if they saw the vision for 2042 and could just not come to an agreement about a creative direction. The trend chasing would also be seen quite clearly in its core gameplay. Before release, we learned that 2042 was going to operate on a specialist or a, you know, hero system instead of the staple class based system like in every other battlefield. So instead of generalized roles like assault or, or medic, etc., 2042 would have characters akin to a game like Rainbow Six or Apex in which each character was ultra specialized. They had extremely specific roles and functions and weapons and gear unique to them. And this did very odd things to Battlefield's core gameplay. I mean, just for starters, I do think this choice went against everything that made Battlefield fundamentally different from other shooters, where, you know, you might be this collective large group of soldiers working towards a single goal and battling against another collective group of soldiers. And also, just personally speaking, I felt this really hurt the teamwork aspect of this game because I think that classes of the past were a lot more broad stroke in terms of what kind of situations they are useful in and can be applied to, but specialists, their, like, roles are so specific that if that particular situation in which that specialist shines doesn't happen in the match then it's kind of pointless for them to even exist anyways and you don't really feel like you're attributing anything to your team it was very fragmented and weird plenty of battlefield 2042's core mechanics are a direct
direct result of them not really knowing where to take the game or it going through a bunch of iterations. For those of you unaware, attachment swapping on the fly was a mechanic specifically made with Battle Royale in mind, yet is one of the core features that ended up making its way into the full game. Something else that would be very out of character for Battlefield and proved to be a quite strange design choice was lessening the emphasis on environmental destruction. I know this was a big problem for a lot of personal friends of mine, and for myself, this was another choice where I could just feel as if Battlefield's identity was slipping away from him. I mean, Bad Company 2 and Battlefield 3 were pretty much renowned in history for showcasing some of the greatest destruction mechanics that any video game could have. The destructible environments, in many ways, has become Battlefield's defining feature and is inexorably linked to its identity, and to take away the emphasis on that made Battlefield feel and play very foreign and alien. And then finally, perhaps the biggest innovation that 2042 was bringing in place of the usual emphasis on map destruction, 2042 would have these insane world and weather events. It became one of the main selling points that they decided to bank on. Yeah, it seemed a little weird, I guess, you know, less destructible environments in exchange for these giant apocalyptic world things. Sure, I, I suppose. And to be honest, on face value, it seemed pretty cool. So I feel the community was uh, maybe a little bit confused why this change was being made, but was open to the idea of this adding some new dynamics to Battlefield's gameplay. But finally, with no campaign for 2042 and some weird changes coming to the multiplayer experience, DICE had one more trick up their sleeve that I'm sure they thought would take the community by storm. Portal mode was announced in which it would allow players to get a taste of that old Battlefield nostalgia again, giving you the opportunity to create your own experiences and rule sets with these classic battlefield maps and weapons. Portal should have been the equivalent to Halo 3 Forge mode, but this feature would not exactly pan out how they expected to at all. And so the time approached, and before long, DICE would announce a delay for 2042's release. Originally planned for October, it would now be released in mid-November. Delays are never a good thing and do not inspire confidence in your community that things are actually going well. So for DICE and EA in pre-release to boast that the game was already ahead of schedule and all is fine, to having to delay the game speaks volumes to what was realistically happening behind closed doors. This last month was spent probably tirelessly crunching trying to polish the game to be in a somewhat releasable and playable state before it comes out. And as far as the community goes, we were all getting kind of antsy for its release and the delay made things just more frustrating and upsetting because it's inevitable to be disappointed when a set release date is pushed back no matter what. But otherwise, there was still a lot of hope as for the actual game. You know, besides some of the odd choices, it still looked pretty good. They'd be increasing the conquest player count from 64 to 128, which initially sounded insane and incredible. And you know, the core moment to moment gameplay still looked like a ton of fun but they would really have to nail it with the release in order to sweep up the FPS market for that year. And then the day would come. November 19th, 2021 was Judgment Day for DICE, EA, and for Battlefield. To say that the game was unpolished and not finished would be the understatement of the century. Virtually nothing in the game was working correctly, not only in terms of the performance, which believe me was beyond unplayable, and I know gamers use the word unplayable pretty liberally these days, like that term gets thrown around a lot, but Battlefield 2042 was legitimately not playable, to a point where it became rated as one of the top 10 worst games on Steam ever. Now besides its abysmal polish, the embarrassing technical state that it launched in, uh, a game that barely functioned well enough to navigate through the menus the other problem was the fact that like the core gameplay the specialist stuff the lack of destructible environments the weird you know weather patterns and stuff was not really having a great reception while some were mostly open to the idea they were a vocal minority where the majority of players who didn't approve of these changes were just exiting and quitting the game outright the amount of player fall off this game had in its first couple of months not only due to the terrible performance but also just the fact that 
it didn't really feel much like a Battlefield game, and its identity had certainly been stripped away from it. This falloff I have never seen in another game before. Now, let's put aside the horrible and inexcusable technical state just for a second, because theoretically, that stuff can and would be patched. But what else was it that caused 2042 to fail on its launch besides that factor? Well, from my personal point of view and from what I've heard from my friends and the Battlefield community at large, there's a couple of key takeaways. The first and biggest one being the specialist system. This was a clear-cut example of not knowing what it was that made your game special and set it apart from the competition and sacrificing it to fit current trends. Battlefield just didn't feel like Battlefield with this system implemented. Secondly, none of the maps were really standouts at all. As far as original Battlefield 2042 maps would go, the ones that people resonated with ended up still being the old Battlefield maps where they were available. Also, there wasn't quite as large of a weapon selection or vehicle and gear sandbox as we were and led to believe initially, making the game feel just a little bit hollow in some ways. And then lastly, the real lack of environmental destruction was a cornerstone to Battlefield's identity that had just been erased. This did not please the fan base even after some performance patches came out because the damage had already been done. I covered Battlefield 2042 well over a year ago, and two years after its initial release where we are now, how has Battlefield managed to mount the comeback of a lifetime with this game? The last time we left it off, they had just begun to acknowledge and start to communicate about the specialist reworks, saying, you know, we've heard you in regards to specialists, and we are making some changes. They still wanted to make it so that, you know, that was the core idea, but they would eventually fold and just straight up go back to traditional classes in later seasons. They would categorize each specialist into four separate classes, Assault, Support, Engineer, and Recon, respectively. And they would have a bunch of ability and gear reworks as well, pretty much being nothing like how they used to play and operate when the game launched. Now, in all fairness, this was a hugely positive change in the right direction, but it would still be months and months after its release after most players had already abandoned it. But 2042 would go much farther in changing the fundamentals of the game, and this includes reworks to pretty much every single map. At this point where we are now, which is well into Season 6, basically every map has been reworked to some degree, and they weren't merely aesthetic and visual changes, although that was a big part of it. The core layout and design and map flow would be entirely reinvented. This was needed because the base versions of 2042's launch maps were just really not good enough. Maps like Hourglass and Renewal, Manifest, Breakaway, and so on saw giant improvements to where they're almost not even recognizable as the same maps that it came out with. Now, while DICE would make a lot of objective improvements to the overall game, not every single mode got the same amount of attention and love. Love. Battlefield 2042 had a mode called Hazard Zone, and this was basically a condensed, watered-down version of what was most likely the original Battle Royale idea for this title. And the player count for this mode fell so low that they actually stopped counting how many players statistically were on it at the time. It, to say it was dead on arrival would just not even be the half of it. It was unbelievably hollow, it was very dull, and just flat-out dead. A lot of people said it was pretty much just like Firestorm, but debatably even worse, and I think the saddest thing of all was Portal Mode never really reached the heights that they intended. Portal Mode, even to this day, is even worse because the main game doesn't really have a server browser, but also Portal is just, instead of having a nostalgic classic Battlefield experience, you load into some older Battlefield game in which most likely has a dumb and absurd rule set that just really isn't what you were expecting. It didn't turn out exactly how they wanted, that much is obvious. These modes would largely just fall by the wayside in terms of what DICE was actively working on day to day, but that doesn't mean they weren't necessarily looking at improving the core experience, which they did. Again, with all of the specialist reworks, the map changes being huge, a lot of the sandbox and vehicle you know, reinvention was amazing. This stuff was hugely positive for the direction of the game, and Battlefield did begin to see a slight glimmer of hope. There was an increase in player count that they hadn't seen in actual months. This could be mostly credited, I think, due to the release of new seasons and a lot of good word of mouth coming out about the game, but it wasn't enough to necessarily bring back the heights that they had reached on launch. Now, I said that in the beginning few months of the game, they had lost basically their entire player count, a sharp fall off that games have very rarely seen. And seasons one and two would have a lot of content that players just frankly wouldn't experience for the most part. So later in seasons with Redux, they would actually 
re-release a bunch of old content that had come out in those previous seasons so that this new returning player count could take part of it. Not only did this help because DICE had already developed this content, but they got to do it in the way that they most likely envisioned from the start. After all of the core changes and map reworks, 2042 at this point just at its most basic level in, in, in the building blocks of this game were just so different than to where it had launched. So it was almost like releasing new content in an entirely different context. Now this wasn't without its criticism because a lot of people did feel it as cheap or unnecessary or a bit of a cop out to not develop new content for the game and just simply reusing old stuff they had already made. And I think there's a case to be made for both of them. I can see why people were upset about this. But the point is, still, with each subsequent season, DICE had been making very positive changes at each and every single step along the way, completely turning a 180 in direction that the fans wanted to see for the game. And in this case, I think it was all the better for it. It began to feel like Battlefield once again. And the class system in no small part being a huge reason for that. The maps feeling significantly better to play on, and the result was a pretty s substantial increase in their player count again but dice had another serious problem how would they get the word out about all of the positive changes they had made i mean 2042 was practically a different video game entirely compared to when it released in 2021 but eventually they would have an idea and the big moment would occur dice would make 2042 free to play for a couple of days and this was the spark that changed it forever the redemption arc would finally begin for Battlefield. While still not a perfect game, it was undeniably in a far better and functioning state than it had been in the past. This was much closer to the game that fans were expecting it to launch as, and honestly, I can't help but feel as if had DICE released it in this state and then added more content on top of this package, it could have been a contender for one of the best Battlefield games in the whole series and would definitely without a doubt not have been one of the worst rated games on Steam when it came out. 2042 would see its player count skyrocket during this time, and the peak player count far eclipsed its previous all-time highs when the game first released to the world. It was one of the most impressive comebacks that any game has managed to achieve, up there right with Cyberpunk for sure. No doubt, you know, the reason for a ton of its success was the fact that it went free to play for a bit, and that was huge, but still, even before that, they were seeing strong player numbers returning at a respectable rate, meaning they were doing something right. And I have to give credit where it's due. While I don't necessarily agree with every choice that was made in Battlefield 2042, I will say that DICE definitely listened to a lot of community feedback, and they didn't just outright abandon the game. They could have just said, oh, this project was a failure, and then moved on to something else, but they did. Didn't. They really focused in and wanted to make this experience as good as it could be and again arguably where it should have been on launch. I'm not going to give them massive credit for you know making the game that this probably should have been when it released but it would be very disingenuous of me not to acknowledge the fact that they really stuck with their project and wanted it to be great despite you know no guarantees that people are going to come back and play it even though they did and it has had an unbelievably impressive comeback in recent months. The thing is Battlefield 2042 is not the same game game that it was when it released. In 2021, that was a different video game. Not only is this one functional, but it's just fundamentally not the same thing at all. And I would even go so far as to say that I think it's a lot of fun now. Again, it's not without its faults either, and I really do think this game still does suffer from a lack of content because of the way that it was sort of recontextualized. They, you know, recycled a lot of content, and the fact that Star Wars Battlefront 2 had to die in order for Battlefield 2042 to be developed and have have support I will still never really forgive them at the end of the day with that but I mean I have to say the game is in a far better state than it was I feel like dice very often puts themselves in the position where they release a game that just isn't good is outright non-functional or unplayable and then they have to spend months or maybe even years in this case trying to play catch up and get it to where it should have been when it launched they're always behind the eight ball in some sense. They release a game and it just isn't quite what people want and it's not what they want either. And then they spend the rest of the months or years or whatever just picking up the pieces. And that's fine because eventually the game becomes good, but it's almost never worth it when it actually comes out to the world. So Battlefield 2042 has had one of the most impressive comebacks ever, but it wasn't without its own trials and tribulations. At this point in time, after season six, support for Battlefield 2042 is coming to a close and only time will tell if 
the player base that it managed to gather again sticks around for the long term. We'll definitely see on that, but regardless, I do think this is a great case of a game making a sheer comeback from the most abysmal state on Earth. Despite having a very rocky road in its overall life cycle, I do still think that the story of Battlefield 2042 should be celebrated and that it mostly does have a happy ending.